Hello. Welcome to SideQuest from Welcome to the Party RPG. Tonight, I am going to be GMing a uh, fate-based RPG uh, that is called the Ministry Initiative. It's a bit of a homebrew for me, but it is basically um, Warehouse 13 in the Victorian era. So thanks for everybody uh, showing up tonight. Um, and quickly with our sponsors who are awesome. Uh, thanks to Roll20, Tabletop Loot, So Nerdware, and Devin Rue for supporting our channel. Also, you can support us uh, with our Patreon, which supports the bulk of the operations here. Uh, subs and bits will give you awesome emotes while giving the players extra benefits. So please check out our Patreon, check out all of our sponsors. Again, that is Roll20, So Nerdware, Tabletop Loot, and Devin Rue. You can also join us at our Discord, uh, which the link will be in the chat. And now we are going to start the game. Uh, my name is Lily. I'm at Elise on Life on Twitter. And now we'll go around and have the characters introduce themselves, well, the players introduce themselves and uh, their character. Uh, we'll start with uh, Gemma. Oh, hello. Uh, my name is Gemma. I go by Kupo Knight on the discords and Twitter's verses. And uh, today I will be playing Phoenix and both character and my, and my pronouns are they, them. Okay, and uh, Jen. Uh, hi, I'm Jen. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Quixote Jen, Q-U-I-X-O-T-E Jen. Um, and I am playing the Pied Piper. Um, I am a grizzled old veteran uh, with maybe a little bit of an ax to grind. <laughs> and uh, Michelle. Hi, I'm Michelle. You can find me on Twitter at Michelle Ely. I'm playing Ruby. I know your boss. <laughs> Ray. Hello, I'm Ray. You can find me on Twitter at Ray Transitional. And I am playing Dusk. Um, she's a little bit older soldier. And you really honestly never know what you're trying to get from her day to day. And last but never least, Lauren. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lauren. You can find me on Twitter at Sithwitch. And I am playing Cypher who uh, would like people to not know her real name because it's a mouthful. Okay. So again, this is a fate-based RPG. Um, and we are going to be starting off uh, at the Ministry Initiative headquarters where um, all of our characters have been gathered. They've been given a... Um, a mission. Uh, so one of the things that uh, you don't know yet about these characters is that while they work for uh, the Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences, they also have a, a secret double agent identity um, for a covert operation within the ministry. So the ministry has given them a um, a a brief about an auction that's going to be happening. There's a jewel known as the Amber Cluster, and it's a large variegated stone made of several fused amber pieces. Rumor has it that the stone has hypnotic powers, and the last time it was seen, it was part of a palm-sized zoetrope. And that zoetrope has recently been advertised as part of a private collection being auctioned off in London. The ministry wants the Amber Cluster and has tasked a group of agents, Phoenix, Dusk, Pied Piper, Cypher, and Ruby with acquiring it. So you have all been told that this is your primary ministry um, mission, but your secondary mission is that you've been given a, a zoetrope, a copy of this original zoetrope that is being sold at auction. And once you acquire the original, 
you have to pass off the copy to the ministry your boss is and give the original to an undercover agent known as Rogue, who is going to work to repatriate this zoetrope where it belongs instead of becoming um, something that makes the, the ministry and therefore the British Empire more powerful. Um, so at this point, you are, this is your first uh, mission as the double agents. It's not your first mission as uh, working for the ministry, but it is your first uh, mission as double agents. And not only are you probably going to be watched by the shadowy superiors that you've never met before, but you will also be tested during this time. Um, you've been given a choice for this auction to either go undercover as servants or go as guests. So you guys can talk amongst yourselves and decide which one you want to do. Oh, I don't do service. Yeah. Do Obviously. we all have to be the same one? Obviously it has to be. No, you can, you can um, split the party <laughs> if you wish. Uh, and, then, and that would be your decision and you would have to like, tell me what it is that you want to do if you're going as a servant or like what you're going to do as a guest. Well, I would prefer to be a guest, but it is true that people don't notice the servants. I'm not going to be very believable as a guest. Servant. I'm pretty scruffy. <laughs> so are you saying we're going to split the party then? It's always the smart thing to do, right? I don't know what you're doing, but I'll be fine. Servant. I can do either. I sort of want to see these other two have to do servant too. Maybe we should all do servant. Oh. Come on, Ruby. It'll be fun. Fun. Will yes. it be fun for her? But will it be fun for her? Oh, it will totally be fun. It'll be fun for us. Oh, uh, Phoenix, are you agreeing to this servant plan? Had my hands dirty before. I don't see why I can't do it again. I'm game. For the mission. I... <laughs> For the mission. Yay. <laughs> For the mission. <laughs> well done, Ruby. Well done. Okay. So if you're going as servants, then you will, um, the ministry will provide you with a standard uh, servant uniform, which is sort of um, a gender. It's just a, a pair of black pants, um, a white shirt, and a black vest that you wear. Uh, and you also are told to go visit uh, research and design, which is where you will receive your weapon. So once you get down to research and design, there's a couple of different things that you can choose. And remember, you have a communicator that allows you to communicate with each other. And then you each have an a individual agent gadget. Um, and you have two spots left for you to choose uh, one or two other weapons that you'd like to take with you. Uh, in as a servant. Um, one of the bonuses of going in as a servant is that you will not be searched before you go in. All the guests coming in the front door are being searched. Um, so that means that you won't have to necessarily, you'll have to conceal your weapons, but they won't have to be like super well hidden. So one of the weapons is a geared lapel pin trigger device. This is an explosive. If you like blowing things up, you may want to try this. There's also a Derringer pistol, which uh, can be hidden. It's small enough to be hidden in a pocket. Um, but it is a, um, a melee weapon, I guess we'll say, because it has to be fired within 
uh, the zone that you're in, like you can't hit someone outside of your zone. Uh, the Tesla Mark IV, which is a rifle, so it is more noticeable unless you're wearing like a long trench coat or something like that. Um, it, ha it can be fired two to four zones from where you are. It's a ranged weapon, so you can't fire in close combat. And then there's the Jack Frost pistol, which can also be concealed like the Derringer. It's a little bit bigger than that, um, but it needs a freeze capsule in order to fire. And it's basically, you know, freezes whoever you fire it at, but it only has the um, one capsule in it. So it effectively is one shot. Decisions, decisions, decisions. <laughs> I have an invention question. Yes. I, I have no idea how we get in as servants carrying a big old rifle. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. It's just strapped on your back. Yeah, no, it's just, we need this. This is for this is for the <laughs> campaign. Um, I'm wondering if there's some way to have a cane that is also a rifle. Okay, so if you wanted to do that, if you wanted, if you want the rifle to somehow be concealed within something that you would uh, not be searched for, that is going to be an invention roll. So this will be the first roll of the night. Right. Um, so you will you will roll your invention on roll twenty again. It should you should just be able to click on it and it does the roll. Okay, I'll figure this out. I think <laughs> just to type. And, and I think just type what you what skill you want to use though, and then mm -hmm. do I just, just type the name of it? Yeah, it'll ask you. It'll prompt you. Mm -hmm. um, invention on this character. Yeah. <laughs> if you have any aspects that you want to use, you can spend a fate point to use. It, it's a fate point per aspect that you want to use, or if you have any. Um, if you have any stunts that would be applicable for this. You well, I have like really legendary, really mm -hmm. around and seen mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Could I use that? Uh, let's see. Um, so basically if you're, if this, your skill is in legendary, then that means that that's just, um, tells you like how much bonus you would get on top of the um, regular dice roll that you do. Okay. I don't know what I'm rolling. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's very no. So okay. Pain. So so Pi 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 Piper invent your invention is average, so you're gonna get a plus okay. one bonus. Okay. All right. Um, to your roll. So then I do the roll four D something. Right, uh, 4DF right. plus one. F. We got there, we got there. Um, Thank you for your patience. <laughs> <laughs> it's a number. It's a number, yes. Wow, that was, oh, wait, that did a plus four, not plus one. 4DF plus one. Yeah. Wait, oh, wait, am I yeah. at the, I'm looking at the wrong thing, sorry. Yes, no, that's right. It's a plus one. Plus okay, one. so um, <laughs> the difficulty for this was a two, which means you didn't quite make it. But because it's not negative, I'm going to say that you were able to conceal this, this rifle within um, this cane. However, uh, the rifle now, instead of... Um, so the Tesla Mark V rifle is able to fire 15 bullets per minute because it's a bolt action. Yours is going to be more like a shotgun. It's going to have two shots. Okay. Thank you. And, it'll, and it'll add a plus two to your firearms when you roll it. Okay. Is that the only rifle? Does that mean the rifle, the rifle is gone? No, no, no. These are these are like these are the weapons that are available. There's enough. Like if you wanted to choose a rifle, also you can do that. 
I would like a rifle, but invention wise, I want it to be easily, I want to be able to easily disassemble it and reassemble it. So it's easier to okay feel. Oh, so uh, like something that's in like two or three parts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yes, give me an invention roll for that. Also. This is going to be awful. I'm, I'm excited. You got this dust. With a minus one? I don't know about that. Oh, no. <laughs> it's okay. Mm, okay. Okay. So, nah. yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't quite work. You tried to do the three parts and what ended up was that um, the, the barrel and the, um, the part where you pull the trigger don't quite connect all the way. And so the bullet kind of gets stuck in jams. Well, that didn't work as expected. Hmm. Is there and no then I like hand it back over? <laughs> Is there no way to improve this cold gadget? I mean, one shot. Yeah. So that's the, again, that's an invention role. If you want to improve or change any of the existing weapons or create a new weapon, it's an invention role. Well, um, <laughs> so I have a stunt called Crown Jewel. Or mm -hmm. I can just throw money at it mm -hmm. so I can use wealth instead of invention. Sure. So you're if you're using the stunt, um, as long as it doesn't say that you need a fate point for it, then no, you don't... here I can put it in the oh the fate yep. point must be spent to activate this stunt. Hmm. No. Is it worth it? No, this one. No, not this one. This one is just sometimes all you need to make something great is a lot of money. That's the one you that's the stuff yeah. you want to use. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you can just use that at will. Oh, okay. So uh roll wealth instead of invention. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I think the template like automatically makes fate points, like automatically says all stunts need fate points, but okay. this one doesn't. Yeah. Okay. So you got a plus two for that, which was its exact um, difficulty, which means you did it. So what is the what is the um, improvement that you want to make for this rifle? I, I want the uh, I want there to be more than one cold charge. Obviously. Okay. Okay. So, how many can I get? Um. Well, you you just met the difficulty, so I'm gonna say that you can now have three cold charges. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so you guys also please be making notes of, of yes. these improvements that you're making to the weapons um, you're carrying. I yes. handed mine back. Um, can I take a, a one of the pistols instead? Yeah, you can take. Um, so there's the, the frost pistol, which only has one capsule, unless you make an improvement on it, like Ruby did. Um, and there's the Derringer pistol, which um, fires two bullets simultaneously at one target, but also only has four bullets in it. So it's effectively two shots. Hmm. I'll just take the pistol as is. The Derringer okay. pistol, sorry. Okay. I think I would like the explosives, please. Okay, okay. <laughs> the lapel pin trigger device, yes. So that has a one zone diameter, just to let you know when you set it off. Um, you should make sure that yourself and your allies can get away from that. 
is it um, instantaneous or does it have like a trigger or something? So if you, it's, it has like a five second delay on it. Um, so if you wanted to make that more, again, it's an invention rule. Uh, I don't think I have very good invention. I think I'll leave it as, as is. Okay. So yeah, it's basically meant to be like the button pushed and then thrown in a sort of grenade type way. Got it. I head over, I head over to Cypher and I'm like, ooh, explosives. What a good idea. I know, right? And now I'll, I'll, I'll also, I'll, I'll also grab uh, explosives. Okay. Um, but let me see what, how many times can I like, uh, can we? Invent. Invent, there we go, words, thank you. There's not really a limit on it, but you can only try to make the exact same improvement once. Ah, okay, so I'm wondering with the grenades if I can make a bigger boom if it has a I, I don't know the range what's the range of so the, the range is it, it's a, a little hazier like um mm. the ranges are in zones and basically where you are is like one zone right and if somebody is um like 30 feet away that's zone two 60 feet zone three sort of that range so anybody in your zone is melee range anybody beyond that is ranged okay and these count as ranged right i can i can log yes. it over you can yeah you can throw if if you throw it it counts as ranged awesome well in that case i will leave the grenades be but i was wondering if i can and then i whip out like my bayonet pistols my gadgets and <laughs> Honestly, I don't understand why they can only carry two bullets. That's just, it's just nonsense. So I'd like to, <laughs> I would like to invent like some sort of like, well, basically to improve it and um, increase the um, words again. I don't carry a gun. Um, <laughs> ammo, capaci ammo capacity? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Just or just like, the amount of shots that can make it once. Um, I mean, I don't mind it just going one by one, but I definitely want it to be more than two bullets in total. So uh, yeah, okay. I'd like to increase the carriage uh, the, the, where the bullets are whatever. Guns. Okay. <laughs> okay. But do I even have a good invention? <laughs> I didn't oh, no. I didn't look either before I tried. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> There's no, it's hard to try. Yay. Okay, so yeah, so you just met the difficulty of two. Uh, wait, what, what, my oh. roll 20 is like way far behind. No, I see, okay. So yeah, so at, at, a, at a just even, you do not, you're not able to um, do that. So, uh, so your, your gadget is still as is, but it doesn't, it won't be able to carry anymore. I'm like staring, like staring at Phoenix out of the corner of my eye and watching, watching them try to do this. And then I'm going to look at mine and I want to try to like decrease the fire rate. So make it fire one shot at a time instead of two. Oh, really? Okay. That, that way I can get four oh, oh, shots okay. total I see what you mean. So you instead get... of yeah. Sure. Sure. Go ahead. I head over to Dusk and go, and I'm like, just kind of cheering Dusk on. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. Let's see. Oh, so sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the this <obvious> one. <laughs> <laughs> Womp womp. womp, womp. <laughs> we are starting out strong. This we is are really the really quest. Starting right out strong. Inventing and failing. Obviously. We this are the great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so sorry. But at least it's still, the, the pistol still works. 
I look so, at it and look at the mess I made of it though. <laughs> I hand it back and can I get another one? Yeah. <laughs> and I just like check the, it and the, reload it and just like put it away. Research, the junior research and design assistant is, rolls their eyes <laughs> and hands you a brand new Sorry. pistol. <laughs> Sorry. Are Don't we uh, judge us? Are we done playing with toys, everybody? Done playing with toys? Yeah. I suppose. I've got everything I need. I've got explosive. <laughs> I, right here. Also my king, but also here. <laughs> okay. All right. You got ready to move on to the auction? Okay. Yes. Let's go. So remember, you do have communicators, which means you can talk to each other um, when you're not in the same room. Yay for you guys. Um, and remind me again, is everybody going as a servant or are some people? Yes. Everybody's going. Oh, okay. yes, we are. We are. As we're like leaving, I'm like rubbing my face and saying, mm, we probably should have went guess. And then I like shrug and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why do you do so uh going as um uh undercover as servants means that Pied Piper is the lead agent. So congratulations, Pied Piper. You. you are leading this team, which means every time um you take an action, uh actually every time every other agent takes an action under your direction meaning you've told them hey go do this they get a plus one to whatever role it is that they're they take so remember that you might want to listen to your leader <laughs> <laughs> you might want to listen to your leader <laughs> okay so you have arrived at the uh estate where the auction is taking place. If you go to your journal on the roll 20, there's under handouts, there's a map named auction. And listen, I did not, I don't know how to do roll 20 maps. Okay. The digital <laughs> stuff. No worries. So yeah. Like I have hand drawn maps yes. and they they are art, y'all. They are art. Okay, <laughs> no, let me tell you. Perfect. Piece. They're perfect. <laughs> this Whatever <is> works. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, okay. I pressed the magnifying glass and I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, well done, GM. Well done. So here is the map. Um, since you're not going in as guests, you won't be entering from the front door. You'll be entering from the back door, which is sort of back behind the uh, ballroom. But ah. uh, all of the X's are where there are armed guards, uh, security employed by uh, Dr. Julius Axelrod, whose house this is. He's also a, one of the um, uh, people who might you may meet bidding on things. He does not own any of these items that are up for auction. He is just the very benevolent host for this auction. The ballroom is where most of the items that are um, up for auction are on display so people can walk around and see what's going on. The main parlor is where the auction will actually be taking place. And then uh, beyond the main parlor is the library. This is where you've been told that the zoetrope is probably gonna be held with uh, possibly other high value items that are being kept beyond lock and key um, at this time. So the there are aspects um, to this thing which will can affect roles that you take while you are trying to do things in uh, as as the servants moving around here in order to acquire the zoetrope. 
And uh, the ballroom, um, the aspect in that room is that it's crowded and that it's mostly uh, wealthy people. Um, the servants aren't real, really allowed in the ballroom. People who want drinks or uh, some of the volovants being uh, offered are um, directed toward the main parlor. Uh, the main parlor, again, is where the auction will actually take place. So there are obstructions there because there are seats set up um, for everybody to sit in. So that's one of the aspects of the room. Is, and there's also the, the uh, people who are uh, ordering drinks at the bar that is uh, against the wall um, next to the front door. So keep that in mind uh, as you decide how you want to access the library where the zoetrope is probably being held. Team, should we have a plan before we go in? Wait, I would I'm in charge. We should I have, have a plan. plan. I have a mm -hmm. plan. We go in as guests and we... <laughs> Never mind. I'm sorry. Never mind. <laughs> Too late for that. Um... What can people do? What are you good at? I like hitting things. I can I can sneak. Sure. Ooh, can you lock pick? I don't know. I haven't tried that in a while. <laughs> so basically, since you only most of you only chose well, all of you only chose one other weapon you have one slot free for something that you can say like oh yeah i'm gonna have a set of lock picks if that's what you would like Dusk. i would like um maybe some knockout drugs like liquid okay. knockout drugs to okay put in people's drinks sure Sure, I can do a I can do a set of uh, a, like a <laughs> for lack of a better <laughs> term, a thieves tool, <laughs> like a lockpick kit. Okay, okay. So um, remember, there are guards uh, in the doorway of the main parlor, and there's possibly undercover guards. Um, also posing as servants the way your group is. So I like Cypher's idea of drugging guests, which would just, <laughs> oh, I'm just a fan of drugging guests, just like in sure. general, just because I don't like it's... rich people. But um, mm -hmm. I also think that maybe it would be useful because it would be a big distraction if a bunch of people just start falling over. Exactly. Okay. You could say it's an outbreak of some sort of disease. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay so food poisoning we could say it's food poisoning champagne poisoning <laughs> and, um, i will sir uh and i can get i can get a tray of the champagne that we can uh that you can um dose and uh i'll spread it around or I'll, I'll make sure to go in a clump of people that way it seems like a pattern yes we don't want it to be too obvious yes Okay. I mean, if people are randomly just like falling out, uh, don't you think that'll cause like some sort of mass hysteria? Exactly. Want... Perfect. Yeah. Yes. And then we it'll draw attention. And then it'll draw attention to the fact that something is going on at the time. Or what if instead of knockout drops, we just get like an, an emetic, an emetic, so that people start throwing up? It'll cause an awful scene. Oh, the smell. Yes, but again, we won't be noticed. Sounds perfect. And if we can try to make sure that they take it while they're in the ballroom, assuming our handlers are actually giving us good info, which would, you know, that's a bit of an assumption. We want them all over there so we can be over by the library, right? So do it in the light. So make sure people in the ballroom are taking the drinks. If we can, yeah. Look for the fanciest people you can. They'll be the most upset. 
it'll be um, quite amusing <laughs> as well as distracting. Leave it to me. Please, please, please space it out. Okay. Place it out? Okay, fine. I'll place it out for the richest people I see. So that's Cypher and Phoenix, and, and Dusk, you have what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, going to look old and be around to hit people if you need to be protected. Uh, Ruby? I would like to be where they are actually pouring drinks. Because okay. I know the best wines, the best, and I'm sure there's probably food there. So I would know the proper uh, pairing of whatever little dish they have with the proper wine. Okay. Or other fluid or other drinks that they have, like champagne or something. Okay. So does this sound like your plan? You're going to have Ruby be in the kitchens where um, the champagnes and the volivants are being set up. Then Phoenix and Cypher are going to be in the hallway outside the ballroom. And uh, Pied Piper and Dusk are going to be inside the main parlor uh, waiting for their opportunity to try to enter the library. I think there needs to be a fight. <laughs> I don't mind getting in a fight. How do we make that helpful? Those guards need to be distracted. They won't be distracted by just some people throwing up. That's not their job. They need to be distracted by some sort of violent outbreak. Grenades? I like the idea of picking a fight and distracting the guards and it sounds really fun, but I'm also wondering if one of us did that, wouldn't they, they you know, end up in jail or shot? Well, mm. perhaps, Ruby, you're, how good are you with people? I'm very good with people. A few words in the right ear could cause infighting between others leaving us safely away from it all. Gossip campaign, I like it. A little slow acting. That could work. Slow acting, but highly effective. How good I are your insults, Ruby? <laughs> um, I... How good are your backhanded insults, Ruby? Very good. I can I know, vouch for that. I, my connections have connections. And please, I know who has mistresses have mistresses. Oh, do tell. Well, I'm, I've heard of this axle rod. And I'm, there are probably very interesting reasons why it's being held at this house and not at a more grander area. I'm okay with this. Yeah. Sounds very thinky thinky, but Ruby, that seems to be your thing. Yes. So where should I be then with, with for this to be? Well, since you are dressed like a servant, you will probably be stopped um, and won't be able to enter the ballroom. So if you wanted to waylay someone, you would have to do it in the hallway between the front door and the ballroom or go into the main parlor where there are people moving in and out. So I should be out and about. Mm -hmm. serving this isn't one of those places or one of those things where they serve drinks during the auction is it and where where should we serve the drinks to cause so the is there like the, a, is there a bar like i thought there was going to be a bar, a bar in the bar main in the parlor. parlor in the main parlor in the main oh, parlor, main parlor. yeah 
So there would mm -hmm. be a bar there where people would be coming up to me and if I wanted to slip a note to someone on a cocktail. Sure. Uh, that is what I would like to do. Okay. Okay. Um, so are you going to do this before? Is, is the, the plan to drug people still on the table? I think we're doing both. Well, yes, it's yes, right. Redundancy. Do, do <laughs> we have a list fighting, of the guests? Same do, we have, do we have a list of the guests that are? No, no. the The guest list was actually really closely guarded. So you do know that the the Dr. Julius Axelrod is the the man who owns this manor where the uh, auction is taking place. You know that um, Lady Sophia Hauptman, which is, who is a widowed marchioness um, to whom the London upper class us all wants to be friends with, she's yes. rumored to be there. And you also know that Raven Blackwell, who's a rumored illegitimate, illegitimate child of the Earl of Cantor, is rumored to be there because they um, are very interested in acquiring things that have supernatural um, connections. And that was Lady, who's the widow? Lady Sophia so Hauptman. I'm going to find her. <laughs> okay. Now, is she the one you want to drug or is she the one you want to um, put the. Uh, Oh, Ruby, do not, do not a drug lady. Oh, no, no, <laughs> no, because no, please. I am very familiar with this uh, individual. Her, dis her displeasure of something could easily just distract people because people are going to want to look at her and oh. whatever. If she is like, this is uncouth. It should have been someplace else. Um, please, like if she wanted to be escorted somewhere where people are vomiting and she wants to be escorted somewhere, the guards would, of course, personally escort her somewhere. Ooh. Yes, she is. Fine, fine. I leave her to you then. Thank All you. All right. But feel free to uh, poison uh, Miss Blackwell. That would be a, a lot of fun. Quick Lots question about friends. location. Mm -hmm. I'm yes. thinking about if we have everybody start to, to vomit in the ballroom and it smells, they're all going to want to come over onto the side where we want to be. So they need to vomit where we want to be. And then they need to gossip and fight in the ballroom because everyone's going to want to go see the fight and That's run away right. from the puke. So, <laughs> so drugging in the parlor. Drugging in the parlor, <laughs> fighting in the ballroom. Perfect. Yes. So just to make sure that I have this set up in my head correctly, the bar is in the parlor. Mm -hmm. Is there no alcohol being served in the ballroom or no service in the ballroom at all? No servants, um, right? There's There are no servants in the ballroom. Oh. Mm. Hmm. No. So that, well, that so is, is it that we don't outside. know what's sorry no I, I was just saying uh so all drinking and snacking is to be done outside the ballroom but the um, main parlor oh that the 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 drinks and the snacks are being served in the main parlor and that is how uh axelrod would prefer it to be but of course if people want to go browse the items up for auction in the ballroom while holding their champagne glasses there's not much that can be done to stop them okay rich people rules got it <laughs> <laughs> exactly so i'm i'm thinking that there's a possibility that one of these names that have come up may request a drink from one of us and it's Im it's important <clears throat> for us to bring it to them because they've just been having a rough night 
maybe that is a way we could sneak into the bar room or sneak alcohol into the bar room or I don't know get a look at what's going on um because I feel like maybe we might need someone to keep an eye out on what listings are up in this auction in the ballroom maybe I don't know I know we're just here for the the thing but no but we may need someone instigating in the ballroom so I think you're right I I could uh I could be like the old, old servant that they kept on because they just felt bad for me, who's really confused and keeps wandering into the ballroom, trying my best to do a really good job. Mm, you're not that old. I can look old. Works for me if it works for you. We could do that or we could do special delivery. I like both. Let's, Someone... let's keep them both on the table. Okay. Anyone else have anything before we, before we do this? No. I don't. All right. So we're winging it. Let's go. <laughs> we have a plan. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so let's start off with um, Ruby's rumor mongering. Um, what is, do you, do you want a specifically targeted message or do you want to just write something scandalous on the cocktail napkin and have it be read by a random party goer? It's always best if the attack comes from a sideways, if you know what I mean. You get one okay. little group talking and then another little group talking and so on and so forth. Okay. So if you are going to write down a rumor, um, and put it on a cocktail napkin and then uh, I have just circulate through the room. Yes, I have a uh, made person. Mm -hmm. My connections among the wealthy and influence could include those more unsavory moral character or so your adversaries believe, plus two per provoke roles where you either seek to intimidate a non ally overcome or create opportunity, threaten, threaten with exposure of a dirty secret, or help mm -hmm. redirect an attack. Like, I was hoping to possibly use that. Okay. All right. So if you want to do that, that is a stunt. So you just, um, you use, uh, you would roll for provoke and you get a plus two on top of whatever it is you're provoke already. It's so okay. I believe that's just a plus two because your provoke is in. Yes. So how do I add the plus two? Do I just roll and then you yeah, you can just roll and then we'll add we can add the two on there. But um okay. so this says uh you're trying to intimidate a non-ally. So that has to be like a particular person. So you have to choose like an actual target. You can't just, um, you know, pass the, the champagne off to a random stranger. Can I target who it's going to be or who it's going to be sent to? That's up to you. Hmm. And we only know that Lady Sophia is going to be there. Mm -hmm. And, and only, you, and you would know at Ruby knows um, who Lady Sophia, like wh what she looks like. Yes. In fact, you know what all of these people look like and they possibly know you. 
I know. Just <laughs> why I was ready to go as a guest. <laughs> Wait. Right, let me repeat. Flaw in the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is why I wanted to go as a guest. I, I mean, you could play it off. Like, there's, oh, you know, well, they often get bored and then want to go slumming. Maybe you just decided, you know. You could say you lost a bet. An, or undercover boss sort of thing, whatever. <laughs> I could. I could. I want to, I want to make it to where I'm, where, um, someone's trying to attack Lady Sophia. Okay. And the rumor is about someone trying to actually try to attack Lady Sophia. And it's going to be sort of like a protect her. But causing, like a physical attack or? Well, it, it's society. Mm -hmm. It's the character, you know, character assassination. Character assassination. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you are going to uh, provoke, you, hmm. So in this case, I feel like you would actually be better using your stunt called like recognizes like because that um oh yes that is be better yeah yeah which which would also mean that you could get into the the ballroom where there are no servants i could if you wanted to Yes, because they would recognize me. Mm -hmm. And it would be sort of like, oh, look, I lost this pet. Oh, my goodness. Isn't it hilarious? <laughs> or you're trying to start a new fashion trend? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, wait a minute, I got in because I know of this possible character assassination. Okay. On Lady Sophia. And while I know people, I knew I could get in this way. So then I would like to use like res it recognizes like. Okay. So in that case, I need you to roll a class roll. Um, this is actually pretty easy for you. It's just going to be a difficulty of one. And who is the other ally that you'd like to take with you into the ballroom? I can look pretty forgettable. Would you be best in the ballroom? It's up to you, Pied Piper. You know how to strategize these things. That's an interesting assumption that you're making, uh, just because they put me in charge. But well, <laughs> I mean, this is going to be a social. Oh, crap. If you can't be someone, can who can be best at like working? I mean, obviously people know me, and so they're going to be looking at me, but who can support me in like spreading, you know, and protecting. If you think you can do that, Pied Piper, please. I mean, like I said, I could, I'm good at not being noticed. I'm not very good at being noticed when I'm gossiping. I don't really do that very much. So I, I could, for that. I could try to enlist some, some contacts. Um, I, know, so, yeah, someone who can, briefly get someone's attention and then all of a sudden just like you look like just anyone that would be actually helpful and also you could see things i couldn't see i can lie but i mean i kind of need to be over there too so i don't know i can 
I can, I can do both. I don't know if I can. I, I mean, I think I can, but I don't know if you all think I can. It's not an assessment of your skill, but if you get trapped in the ballroom, then we're kind of at yes. a loss. Yes, you're more important out by yes. the library. Because I will effectively be trying to be the distraction in the ballroom. Yeah. Uh, I, I know people. Um, I'm not somebody who is known. So perhaps that could be useful. That sounds very ballroom-like. That sounds very useful. Safer in the ballroom. Okay. So I'm rolling class. Oh, also while I'm there, I could perhaps uh, spread some rumors about the veracity of these items. Wait, wait, don't we want them to think that it's the right item because we're going to replace oh it with God. a fake? Well, y no, the items that are already in the ballroom not the ones that are being hidden. Um, spread some rumors. While, while Ruby is spreading rumors about people, I could perhaps spread some, sow some doubt about the, uh, how up and up all these items are, that perhaps um, this uh, Dr. Axelrod is, has substituted some fakes and is keeping some for himself or somebody else, uh, I don't, I, I know enough technical talk to be able to um, fool them that somebody else has uh, dropped that rumor perhaps. Maybe the other way around, maybe like there's an imp unimpeachable reputation here. These are all absolutely positively the actual thing so, because we're replacing it with a fake, so I just don't want the word fake to like be said. Okay. All right. The whole uh, night. In that case, then perhaps uh, use my technical skills, as it were, to uh, just drop hints that somebody else is bidding on certain items and that I know people would want, and start a distraction that way. Rest of the group, what do you think? I, 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 I like it. Um, I think you could also maybe lie about a few things that might be here to try to get more intrigue oh, into the ballroom. That's an excellent idea. Thank you, Dusk. Mm. All right, so I shall be in the ballroom with Ruby. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's start there. Um, and Ruby, you rolled your class roll already and you made the, um, the one difficulty. All minuses, my gosh. <laughs> Sheesh. It's a good like, thing oh. you had that bonus. <laughs> yeah, I have a plus, I'm superb in it. Plus five. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so you made the difficulty though. So who, whoever it is that you wish to speak to, um, uh, uh, like, oh, I'm sorry, you did like recognizes like, yes. So yes. whichever room you wish to enter, you will be granted access and you'll be able to take one other ally inside with you, uh, with your fast talking uh, speech and family name. Yes. So I'll be taking a cipher with me into uh, the ballroom, which means... Um, <sighs> They will be calling me Madeline. Okay. Okay, so you two are in the ballroom now. Uh, what is, what's the distraction again, the other distraction? Uh, I'm going to be um, exaggerating a bit about 
what's here and uh, who's bidding on what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just sowing some discord. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, what do you have that's good for that? Because that will be. Oh, cool. geez. Okay. Um, <laughs> rapport. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's 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 perfect. Yeah, it would it would be like either a w rapport or a class role. My rapport is better than class, so. All right. Um, so are you going to try to use any of your stunts? Um. Hmm. No. Okay. Okay. So just do a rapport roll. Yeah, I got a plus one. Awesome. So yeah, you go around, let's say you pick three targets um, where you just mentioned something about the, the uh, provenance of some of these items uh, that... So, Wait, sorry, I'm confused. You were you going to say they were excellent items, or that some of them maybe? Um, I am awesome. going to be saying um, some rare item that I know about from my research is mm -hmm. here. That absolutely is not here because it's okay elsewhere in some private collection, or hell, even at the ministry. Sure, um, and. If I find the right circumstances, like if I know these who these people are, if I've heard of them, and I know of a rivalry there or something, I would be saying, okay. oh, did you hear so-and-so is bidding on this item? Isn't that interesting? Okay. All right. So that, that works. So you now, uh, in the main parlor, there's now some whispers going around that a really, really rare item maybe more than one item is actually going to be at the auction that's not on display in the ballroom. There's some mysterious uh, secrecy surrounding these things. And of course, it is already known that the zoetrope is going to be auctioned, but it is not on display because it is such a high value item. So now there's whispers going around that there's even more than just the zoetrope that's going to be here. Yes, did you hear this reliquary of Saint whoever is going to be <laughs> A very popular saint. Sure. <laughs> saint, of okay. saint Sebastian. I don't know. <laughs> the saint of all names. <laughs> um, but also this is has proved to be a, a fair enough distraction that the parlor, um, there were about 40 people milling around in the main parlor, getting drinks, uh, choosing volivants, and now there's only about 15 people left in the main parlor. Many of them have moved into the ballroom to get a better look at the items that are on display in order to see if, well, maybe there's uh, something hidden amongst these displayed items that really is uh, very, very valuable. And mixed in there with the rumors about, you know, Miss Blackwell is getting, well, very sort of antsy about certain things. And so she's starting to try to angle her way. And of course, I am working toward I'm protecting Lady Sophia and and everything okay. so there's going to be right. start little rumblings of that as well so we've got a lot of talk going and with this movement of guests uh toward the ballroom there are two guards outside the doors of the ball outside it's actually not doors it's just like a big archway but on either side of the archway on the outside of the ballroom and then there are two guards on either side of the archway inside the ballroom. The two guards that were on the outside have now moved inside. Um, 
in order to keep an eye on this new like influx. The ballroom is now really, really crowded. People are moving around. Some people are actually inebriated at this point. Um, a few people have gotten bumped into. There's a, my dress, you spilled champagne on my dress. This is an original. Um, so those four guards are now all inside the ballroom moving around. No one is actually standing at the doors of the ballroom. However, the two guards that are outside the archway of the main parlor are still there. How they were standing sort of right in the middle so that they could see into the parlor and into the hallway. They are now looking into the hallway. So there are no guards actually paying attention in the main parlor at this point. Are there? <laughs> well, Dusk, time for you to do your magic. I would like to look around first and I am going to... Oh yes, I'd like to do that too. I'm actually pretty good at noticing things. Okay, so anybody who wants to look around, uh, do a notice roll. I think I'm in there with you, so I'm gonna. I'm there. Oh, with so you. I'm specifically going to use my um, stunt as Shadow sure. King and yeah. try to notice any hidden spies, any hidden um, guards, or any yeah. That might be some people who like obviously look like they're not servers or shouldn't be guests or like are too on alert to not mm -hmm. do the thing. Sure. Um, so the there is someone behind the bar that's along the um, farthest wall from where the the door to the library is. Uh, they're not paying attention to you. They're mixing drinks, but they you can see that there's sort of a bulge in um, underneath their uh, jacket that they're wearing uh, that almost certainly indicates a weapon. Did y'all check that out? I'm like, I guess talking into my communicator. Yeah, you like, can talk nonchalantly. <laughs> yeah. I'm in the, I'm somewhere uh, around our, the parlor, like kind of glancing. I'm like, I'm like casually talking into my communicator, but like I have a tray of drinks and I'm like sniffing at one of them and then like sniffing at another one, like just trying to be like nonchalant and like I'm an idiot. <laughs> Roger, Roger. I mean, have a canapé. <laughs> <laughs> And Phoenix, are you are you in the parlor or in the ballroom? I thought we were supposed to be in. Yeah, I thought Cypher myself, Piper, and Phoenix. Okay, we're yeah. in the parlor. Parlor. Okay, so um, Phoenix, you're in the parlor. You notice everything. You got a plus eight, eight. on that roll. <laughs> I told you, I'm good at noticing. <laughs> 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 you, you notice everything. I am you just notice, you you <laughs> notice the uh the you also notice the the person behind the bar. Um they do have uh a weapon inside their jacket, but it is not a pistol, it's just a uh dagger. Um and there are no other uh like undercover security people in this room at the time. You also notice that the two guards on the outside of the archway of the parlor are paying so close attention to the hallway that they have not noticed that the main parlor now has no one in there except for you um, and dusk you and, and dusk the and the bar and, and and the the person behind the bar yes well dusk it's just me you and that bartender with a with a knife pied piper is 
not with us, not around. I'm Hi. here. It's just hard to notice. Oh, there's Pi Piper. Silly I'm game. I'm still here. <laughs> Boss, what should we do with so, the bartender? Let me see if I can distract him. Mm -hmm. Me. And I, I'm going to go up and just kind of start like a rambling, like, I've been serving here for so many years. How long have you been working here? It's just really like, oh, man, the rich people have just gotten snobbier and snobbier and snobbier. And oh, my goodness, my aching bones. And I'm just going to- Back in my day. <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> Over 30, my bones hurt. <laughs> I would like you to make a rapport roll for that. Hey, okay. I'm average at that. <laughs> okay nice right. perfect perfect yeah it's it's just that one person they're making drinks the difficulty was just one for you to engage in conversation and distract them so you inserted yourself so that they're you're kind of you're like bulk is is blocking um, where dusk is now approaching this locked door to the library. Um, and uh, Phoenix, are you backing dusk up or just kind of like standing in the middle somewhere? Phoenix, um, come with me. Come with yeah, me. Yeah, I wanna. I wanna be. Yeah, I wanna be on dusk's on dusk is uh, six and kind of just kind of kind of still playing the role but making sure I'm closer just and like kind of use my like just to notice if people are if noticing if, is good, if the bartender's going to pay attention because there is there is no one here so yeah okay all right uh dusk hmm. to you can use your lock picks you still have to make a roll for that okay. and it's going to be a stealth roll I love it Hmm. Uh, I'm scared now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. Oh, yeah. oh my God. How are you scared? You said, what? what? Wow. So, I I set the difficulty for this as pretty high because it's a you know high value targets behind this doorway. So I had set the difficulty at four, and you have way surpassed that. You, you just kind of stick the lock picks in and just like the lock just opens, like clicks, like that easily. Like it, it doesn't you know even what? seem like to yeah, you. It was, it was unlocked all along. Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 totally so uh, you go inside the room and there's one um, like desk size table in the room. Uh, the zoetrope is right in the middle of the desk, and there are two other items there also. One is in like a like a glass box, um, and it's a diamond pendant. And then in another one is um, sort of, it's also in a, a glass box, but it's sitting upright. Um, and it looks like a, like basically very oversized wishbone. I'm gonna describe them like super quickly to my uh, companions and mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. do do these things sound important? You know, other than the thing. Oh, take the diamonds, the diamonds. Hey, so what? <laughs> this this okay. is your mission, though. Remember, I would like to. I would like to roll mythology because I would know uh, all, a lot of these <laughs> items. Mm. I was just gonna say someone can roll mythology if they wish. Oh no, I'm negative on that. No. <laughs> okay. So the, the, the diamond pendant, you absolutely know what that is. Um, it is, it was my, the diamond itself was mined in South Africa and it was disappeared, um, probably stolen and sold to a private collector. 
And it's rumored that it has, allows the wearer the ability to change their face. Like to, it's like a glamour almost. Hmm. Um, and this is on a list of the 10 most wanted artifacts for the ministry. Hmm. The hey, other uh, item, oh, sorry. the other item that looks like the oversized wishbone seems familiar to you, but because you just got um, the difficulty, which was two, uh, it, you don't really have any details on it. Okay. Hey. Bye, Pied Piper. Piper starts coughing <clears throat> in front of the bartender and <clears throat> stick to the mission. <clears throat> stick to the mission. <clears throat> and then Ruby's going to be like, you know, those are very interesting diamonds you're wearing. And like in the party and stuff. So <laughs> yeah, I like this. <laughs> uh, like, uh, Dusk is like laughing a little bit, like into the communicator. <laughs> uh, so it's so. at this time that um, that all of you notice that the lights like blink on and off, like a um, reminder that would happen at say uh, the ballet or the opera to say, "Hey, intermission is ending. Please, everyone." Uh, proceed into the main parlor where the auction will be taking place. Oh, crap. Hurry up. Hurry up. <laughs> Running out of time. I look over to the door and I'm like, get your ass over here. Okay. I would like everyone in the main parlor at this time to make a stealth roll, please. Oh, God. Um, and I'm technically not in the main parlor, so not me. Or is it me? Like, you... definitely me. <laughs> uh, no, actually, just the, just the, if you're still in the library, you haven't come out of the library. Okay, no. <laughs> uh, uh. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was oh ineffective. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, but can, uh, I use, can I use my hypervigilance, my vigilancy? Did you roll already? Are you rolled already? Um, I, I let's see. For, well, what, is, what is what is what is your hyper? Like it's it's just so that um, it's impossible for like anyone or anything to catch me off guard. Okay. Um, do you have to spend a fate point for that? It doesn't say. Okay. It just says I add two to any notice rolls. Okay, so, but this wasn't a notice roll, this was a stealth roll. I was hoping I could, you can finagle that, but. <laughs> we can't this use was a stealth roll. <laughs> we can't, you um, noticed you had to stealth. We yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can't use stunts after we roll. Um. It, it depends because the stunt has to be for, uh, like, if, if I ask you to do a particular role, mm -hmm. then the stunt has to count for that particular role for you to be able to use it after you've got it. So like who me, you have the ability to make yourself unforgettable and innocuous so that guards or law enforcement, you slip past them undetected? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, that would be is that but that only counts for you yeah oh yeah i'm just saving my mm -hmm. skin right now <laughs> okay. just to be clear <laughs> yes <laughs> you, you can use that if you wish because right. that doesn't have a specific yeah there you go because you can declare an automatic success awesome um, once per session. So uh, you're using a fate point for that, which means you are down to two fate points. Okay. Um, yeah. So you have slipped out of the main parlor um, and are uh, outside the front door. Okay. <laughs> However, 
because you were the one distracting the guy at the um at the bar with your exit with your exit uh he now notices uh cipher and he notices that the door to the library is wide open which it should not be at all i definitely would have closed it behind me <laughs> he is going to uh pull out his knife and oh, whoa. throw it his dagger and throw it toward cypher <laughs> i need wait why uh, cypher? or a phoenix probably uh, yeah. a phoenix. phoenix i'm sorry phoenix, <laughs> phoenix. i was like wait what did i do <laughs> sorry <laughs> We're still gossiping. Uh, toward Phoenix. So, Phoenix, I need you to make um, either a physique or sport roll. Like, this is you trying to dodge out of the way of this knife. Nice. Mm. I'd okay. like to catch the knife. If if it was that <laughs> doing a muck move, huh? <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna let you do that because he rolled a negative one on this opposed <laughs> one. <laughs> so the knife comes sail the dag dagger comes sailing toward you and you just catch it I right in and catch it and then I taunt him and go. Naughty, naughty. He's going to come around um, from the, the back of the bar and he's now shouting, guards, guards. Uh, and he's going to just try to tackle you. So again, a physique or sport roll. God, this guy. Going with physique again. Okay, you dodge out of the way of him. He falls on the ground. Um, and Come on. <laughs> you're no fun. He falls on the ground and he is now prone on the ground. Do you want to engage him again or do you want to just run out of the room? Um, you can hear people in the hallway now. And there's the, definitely the bulk of the guests have moved out of the ballroom and are now milling about in the hallway. And the two guards that were outside are now looking into the room. They see one, uh, the, the bartender on the floor and uh -huh. they see a person dressed as a servant standing over that bartender holding a dagger. I want, I want to see if I can like stealthily knock him unconscious with the butt of my gun, with the butt of my <laughs> okay. pistol. The the bartender. Yeah. Okay. Because he's All right. if he's if he's still he's awake, right? He's 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 still awake. Yeah. Because he just fell. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. they're they're going to they're going to believe him, so he he needs to be KO'd. Like he just needs to knock out. I'm hoping okay. to knock him out. <laughs> um, that's going to be a fight roll. Fight roll. Damn it. <laughs> oh, no. I was hoping that was physical, but okay. Do I have anything that does with fight? No. Okay. Oh, no. I'm scared now. Hey, can I do stuff while this is going on? Because I obviously hear the commotion yep. outside okay. the door. Yeah. So, lots too. So, like, as, I, as soon as I hear this, like, I'm, just in case, I'm going to activate my nice heat-seeking contact lenses signature, heat signature, night vision contact lenses. Okay. Kind of look around the air, and just for, I mean, obviously we knew what I was doing, so I have, like, the, the fake, the fake, um, the fake one, so 
Um, I'm going to look around the area of where it is and mm-hmm. see if there's anything just to make sure that there isn't nothing that will set off or go on, no alarm or I guess lasers or anything like that that'll yes nope it was the the library room itself was surprisingly low tech like they I I'm I'm pretty sure that Axelrod and the other people who were doing the who were who contributed items to the auction really thought that the the human uh, uh, bodyguards and and um, security was as much as they needed for this because after all it was a lot of other high society people attending this auction not you know like thugs. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to switch them out super quick. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like I don't have a whole lot try to hide this thing on my person somewhere okay Um, and then I'm gonna like <laughs> whisper into the communicator hey whatever you do just try to stay casual don't let them know that you're anything more than you are okay so in order to hide that um I need a stealth roll. And then are you now exiting the library? To- oh, no, I was still in the library, like doing all, saying all of this. And then, uh, then I wanted to like peek out, mm-hmm. see what my situation is, mm-hmm. and then use my aspect of now you see me, now you don't, to try to disappear. Okay. Um. How, how is the situation? Like, are there people like in the main parlor? Is this being seen? So people haven't actually entered the main parlor yet. And the two security guards on the archway are just now looking in. There's a lot of people who are filtering out of the ballroom and filling the hallway, but no one else has actually entered the main parlor. But this would be a great time for a fight to break out then, in the ballroom. Yeah, I was wondering if I could do, uh, hold on, let me click on it, made person. Okay. Um, it says I can re- help redirect an attack being made to an ally, calling attention yes. to myself. Mm-hmm. So I'm still in the ballroom, so. Okay. Okay. So uh you have to roll uh provoke and you get a plus two to that uh so i'm gonna say that there's still a lot of people um in the ballroom it's 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 a crush um so if you are going to try to like make a a distraction in order to redirect the attention of the two guards who have now seen um who have who have now seen into the main parlor they've definitely seen phoenix uh dusk is still inside the library but the door is the the door that should have been locked is now open so anybody who actually comes into the parlor and looks toward the library will see that the door is open so if what you want to do is redirect the, the, the guard's attention um, toward you and pull them away from the main parlor, you would roll a provoke and you get a plus two to that. Do I just roll provoke and then you'll add the two or? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so it, that is a plus two, which two. is the the difficulty so you meet that so um the two guards that are uh standing on the outside of the main parlor start walking toward the ballroom um and the people people who were in the hallway are now like transfixed by some uh argument that is going on there raised voices and it's very very unlike uh the the upper class to be so um indiscreet with their 
with their uh, arguments at this point. And so everybody wants to, to uh, pay attention to this so they can start their own rumors and, and get all the details. Who so has the Pied Piper, you are outside the, the front door at this point. You're the only one that has actually exited this building <laughs> at this point. I'm directing from afar. The leader mm -hmm. can't go down with the ship. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who has the puke pills? Oh, uh, that would be me. Time to puke. It's you. Okay. Go on. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to, so I've been all evening, I guess, handing out like a tray of drinks and snacks and such. Um, I'm going to put them in there and hand them out more aggressively. And uh, okay. Yeah. If no yeah. one's drinking, take it yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, do I need to roll? Um, <laughs> you're, you're just passing out drinks yeah, you're okay. really aggressively. Yes. No, you don't have to roll okay. for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go back to Phoenix. What are you doing at this point? Well, I rolled a, it was a plus three mm -hmm. for, uh, for the roll when I try, when I'm trying to knock knock the bartender out oh yeah you knocked him out you knocked him out and now the the guards that were that were looking in and seeing you standing over this uh person with a dagger and now a pistol um have have walked away oh they walked away mm -hmm. yeah oh. the, the the fight in the ballroom is much more interesting to them oh i'm gonna peek out then Hey, what's going on out here? Nothing, sadly. I look at the bartender, I'm like, sorry. Here, Nothing drag him. Drag He's him unconscious, here. so he Dra doesn't drag accept your apology. Dra drag I, him in here. I drag the bartender to the library. Okay. Okay. Um, I assume that you're taking the zoetrope because that is your mission. Mm -hmm. Are you also taking the wish the large wishbone like item and the diamond pendant nah but okay. these belong to other countries we should take them back isn't that our mission overall no Pied piper what do you think stick with the mission you're you're the boss that's right stick with the mission <laughs> i don't see i'm it. sure there'll be any plenty other Unless she, I mean, unless you want to go in there and I won't tell. Am I like communicators on the entire time? Don't listen to Dusk, Phoenix. I'm fine. Okay. Finish. All right. Well, come on. I'll lock the door behind you. Hurry up. Let's go. Okay. All um, right. to exit out of the um the main parlor and and then out the front door i need all of everyone who is actually leaving right now at this point to make a stealth roll oh no okay and I i'm not i'm not leaving right now so i'm gonna okay. start heading that way so is a mental Wait. stress box something that can help people on stealth rolls? Just checking. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I can give you guys one, but I don't know what it is. So it's, I mean, um, so so mental stress is um, is against your will. That is like if a a an attack is made against you, uh, like empathy, um, or rapport. Uh, those things affect your will. Um, physical is when an attack is made against you using a firearm or like a wrestling or sport or something like that. Do we start getting the 
bonus because she's telling us to leave? If if you are following her, yes. Okay. okay. In that case. Are, okay. Has Pied Piper ordered us to leave? That's I guess that's what I stick with the mission. And if we got the item, get out. And you are okay. spared my inspirational speech because it won't help you. Okay. <laughs> then I will start to yeah. Okay. Um, yes. And I mean, because I, I do, if I can at this point, if it'll give me any bonus, I do would like to use my aspect. Now you see me done, you don't, so I can like just like disappear out the door. Okay. Um, does, do you have to use a fate point for that? I don't know. Do I? It should say it. Let's see. I, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's an nope. aspect, so I don't. It's an aspect. No aspects. All all of your aspects use fate points. Okay, uh, so I you don't have to use mind. a fate point for that. I don't mind at all. I'll use it. <laughs> I, I went up instead of down. Yeah. Or hmm, nah. Uh, none hmm. of my aspects can yeah. help me get out. Could they? I'll, I'll keep it. I think I, I got a four, so that's not awful. We can't use uh, an aspect after, right? We have to use it um is it what's what's aspect are you trying to use i don't know something that could get, get me out of there because i sort of i drew attention to myself in mm -hmm, order mm -hmm. for them to get away so now i'm trying right. to get away um so i mean is anyone puking yet like this is when you could role play something so your aspects all have to do with you acting like very uh wealthy and upper class in order to just talk your way out of situation can are people getting sick uh yes they as any anyone who is uh, okay so be... i want to be um so i have an aspect called i personally know your boss and mm -hmm. I want to sort of like try to like work my way out. Oh my goodness, people are getting sick. I have to talk to the guards and no, and I have to be like, I don't want to talk to the guards. Yes, you have to help these people. Of course you do. Uh, I know your boss. Okay, so I want you to make a rapport roll and you get a plus two to that on top of whatever your bonus would be for rapport normal. Okay. Actually, you know what? That's gonna, I'm gonna have that be a class role, which you have already done really good. Okay. So um, make a class mm -hmm. role and you get a plus two to it. All right. So plus two yeah. would be seven. Mm -hmm. And that used the fifth yeah. point, correct? Um, yes. Cool. That really works. Like you are just you just kind of cut through the crowd like butter and right out to the front door so now pied piper and ruby are outside uh you actually get a plus four to that um anyway that so you you really did good for that because you get also get the plus two for following pied piper's orders um so yeah you just you're outside and Pi Piper is also outside. Um, and so Cypher is as well, right? Mm hmm. Okay. Cypher. I had a, you... uh, I had a plus two. And then mm -hmm. with the plus two, I guess, from the, from the, order. yeah. Yep. So you, you are outside also. Oh, too. Yeah, I have to I go had a... get clean up. Zoom. I had a plus four for stealth and then the plus two for orders. Would. Okay, you make it outside also. Hey, Phoenix. I was wondering if I would like to use uh, one of my stunts and use okay. it instead of stealth. Um, I mm -hmm. kind of want to, I'm in the, I'm in the main room, but, or the main parlor room, but I kind of want to use my skills as, um, because I am from the circus. I type mm -hmm. little all of this i'm very nimble so i kind of want to use my agility and kind of just dash between the crowds and just kind of remain kind of like being all secretive and just slip out of the building like i was never there <laughs> dancing her way through <laughs> gliding through the crowd 
okay. Um, is this a, are you, is this a, one of your stunts? Yes. Or? So instead of stealth, I would, I would, uh, I would switch it with sport. Okay. Go ahead and do that roll. Is that something I have to click the, I don't click the stunt itself, right? No, no. Okay. Just you, I mean, you just do um, the, 4DF uh -huh. and then uh, the plus whatever your sport bonus is. Okay. Or, or I think actually you can probably just click on sport. Mm -hmm. and you yeah, you can click to roll sport like you have. So sport is one of the skills down there. So yeah. you should be able to click one of those to roll it and then add the plus two afterwards. Okay. So. so plus two would be four. Plus two from following. Yeah. That would following be six. Maybe. Hmm? Okay. You've all made it out. <laughs> You've all made it out of the building well, and geez. there's yeah. such chaos now, people getting sick and uh, 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 there's a, a guard is discovered, knocked unconscious, the door to the, oh, did you relock the library door? or like reclose it? Okay. Mm -hmm. So no one knows that anything is missing yet, but you've all made it out and you escape back to Ministry HQ. Yay! Ooh, I look you at have the like, item. Beautiful chaos. <laughs> I knew you were all good. That's why I left first because I knew I had faith in you and you were good job team. Yeah. Here to go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And yeah. now Super. we will take a break for our players as well as our characters. <laughs> um we will we'll do, we'll do a, uh, about a 10 minute break. Um, and right before we go to break, I'd like to uh, remind everyone that we have greatly used uh, Roll20 um, for this game and for many of the games that we have on Welcome to the Party. Uh, you can go to roll20.net slash start slash WTTP, sign up for a free account today, and you can use them to play almost any kind of game. Fate games, D&D &D games, whatever you wish. Uh, that is roll20.net slash start slash WTTP. And we will see you back here after the break in about 10 minutes. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. If you get a second during break, you should check out one of our amazing sponsors. We're now proudly sponsored by Roll20, the best virtual tabletop for all your role-playing needs. Over 4 million people use Roll20's virtual tabletop to power their favorite games. And with more modules than you can shake a stick at on their new revamped storefront, you'll definitely find something for your group to enjoy. Sign up today by clicking the link below or heading to roll20.net front slash start front slash WTTP. Tabletop Loot is an amazing place to get your dice, dice bags, dice boxes, and more. And now you can get 15% off your purchase at TabletopLoot.com by using the code WTTPDICE at checkout. Tabletop Loot. Your party starts here. While you're at it, check out our so awesome merch store, So Nerdware. So Nerdware is the place to find all your Welcome to the Party merch and other amazing stuff too. Head on over to SoNerdware.com and use the code WELCOME at checkout to get 10% off your next purchase. So Nerdware, it's what the nerds wear. Devin Rue, the amazing mistress of maps, has kindly supported the channel since the beginning and provides graphics for many of our streams. Head on over to RueInc.com to check out some of the best fantasy cartography on the web. Our Patreon supports the creators and producers of the channel by providing Roll20 subscriptions, cost coverage for video hosting, and more. If you want to support the channel while getting podcasts a week early, gaming articles that are published on Patreon first, a shout-out during our break, and more, head on over to patreon.com front slash welcomepartyrpg and throw us a buck or five. And last, but certainly not least, help out the party. Subs and bits not only support the stream, but also, every 500 bits or a tier 1 sub gives a player or DM of your choice a reroll or system equivalent. And every 1000 bits or tier 2 sub gives a player or DM of your choice a crit or system equivalent. Thanks again for hanging out with us today. The game will be back in just a few minutes. 
Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat.
And we're back uh, for the second half of this uh, Victorian era Warehouse 13-esque fate RPG. Um, so a little bit of a recap, our agents were tasked with uh, acquiring a zoetrope that has a very valuable amber cluster on it that is said to be able to hypnotize people. And they did. They made a bit of a ruckus at the auction, but managed to make it out with the item and uh, rendezvous back at Ministry HQ where they are supposed to drop off uh, this zoetrope. So before you actually go to, um, to the archives, you're supposed to meet Agent Wellington Books, which is a very um, famous and venerable uh, agent um, from the archives. In fact, he's the head of the archives. Uh, you have two um, choices that you can make. You can either present Agent Books with the real zoetrope, because of course he will probably want to verify that it is real, and then switch it somewhere between him verifying it and it being archived. Or you can present him with the fake one that you have and then try to abscond with the real one before you uh, before your deceit is discovered. I have an idea that I don't know if it'll work, but it may. Give him the fake one. Yes, I was going to say, definitely the give second him the one. fake one. Yes, definitely the second we one. Could give him the fake one. But what if we say that it turned out to be a fake after all? I mean, I could say that I was able to look at it as we were leaving and because I am a junior archivist I I have the resources to know which is real and which is fake mm -hmm. and but I then, can say I don't know if this is the real one or not but then won't the ministry keep looking for it well if they're going to find out it's a fake anyway well, it depends on how good we are at lying. That's true. I'm not the best at lying. I mean, really I good liar? Lie. <laughs> I can lie. Why does that not surprise me, Dusk? <laughs> Please. I don't know. Why it doesn't surprise you? you? You've got sneaky. You've got sneaky down. Mm, yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah. You're just sneaky I'm with words as well as with movement. I'm pretty average when it comes to deceiving people, I'm afraid. I have a trick up my sleeve. Or two. Or three? Mm-hmm. What are the tricks? I have a gadget that can um, make someone fail. enemy so if we pass on the fake one you could use this gadget to force an auto failure to an enemy's provoke deceive empathy or will roll can't we use that as a last resort though to see yes if yes. they're not buying our story exactly you have a gadget that can make someone really dumb? Well, they, they fail. I make them fail once per day. That is impressive. I just shock people and hit people really hard. That is really impressive. Yes, it is. So Dusk tries to lie and Ruby helps out if it doesn't work. And the rest of us just kind of... And if all else I can say, oh, I don't know if it was the real one to begin with. And we could just say okay. we did. Absolutely last resort. I am terrible at lying. Okay. And then we could just say we didn't believe her. 
because but she is so terrible. <laughs> when you do, when I when I do this, I'll just I'm just letting you know now. We all look silly. We all look a mess. If you're too close to me when I do this, I might laugh. I'm not gonna lie, I may laugh. But but just right. just thing, like stand back, stay watch, stay, stay aware, and I'll just I'll go up and talk to whoever this is. Who, who whoever this is. Now I'll be just, close by. Just stare at his nose and think of really sad things. Just sad. Just sick puppies. So we are presenting the fake as the real. Yes. Yes, we are. Okay, good. At first. And then if I fumble this roll, <laughs> it might happen. Be there. And if I'll that there. fails, I can try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have? All right, let's let's do it plan a plan b plan c <clears throat> let's uh let's wing it let's go okay Ready. all right team so um if you will all refer to your ministry hq archives handout it's another incredibly detailed and wonderful wonderful hand-drawn map of mine <laughs> on the roll yes. 20. it's beautiful stunning um, <laughs> this this is basically the archives it's in sub basement one of ministry hq so you have to take an elevator down um and then it just opens into a very large room and all those very detailed um pencil drawn lines of mine are basically just like shelves and shelves of different archives and then Wellington Books' desk is right there on the left side when you enter, or the right side if you're actually looking at it from your point of view. Um, who's going in first? Or are all of you going down in the elevator to the sub-basement? Oh, we don't all have to be there. That might be a good thing. So I guess. Plan A, plan B, plan C Ruby, go in. Ruby and Cypher. Yeah, I guess you can come in, but remember, stay back. And I suggest that we keep the original with um, somebody not on the group down there. I just like toss it to Phoenix. Here, take this. The real okay. one anyway. Ooh. Okay. So Phoenix, you're staying at street level with the real one? Yes. With, and I think with Pied Piper, so something yeah. mm -hmm. happens, you two okay. can punch just, and run. Just in case Phoenix has my kind of character, I'm just going to be watching them <laughs> while they're standing there with the thing. Just, just nonchalantly. Sure, watching. sure. Um, I'm just doing stretches, and I'm like kind of doing like kind of doing splits. Mm -hmm. Do handstands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then everyone, everyone else is going down in, uh, going down to the sub basement in the elevator. Yes. Okay. All right. So you go down into the basement and you enter into the archives. Well, in the actually, in the, the elevator, I'm yes. like, you both watch me as I like mess myself up. Like I mess myself up. Clothes are like disheveled. Hair is a mess. Like mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. make myself look really, really disheveled. And I look at you both and I'm like, thumbs up. <laughs> okay. You look a mess. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. oh, mess. Oh. Can't wait to get out of these clothes. Uh, Dusk is definitely walking in to um, speak to Wellington Books. Are the other two staying in the elevator or ex exiting? Exiting, okay. but staying a bit behind. Okay. Okay. Um, so, Dusk, you bring this zoetrope over to uh, Wellington Books Desk. What do you say? I like my my entire demeanor changes when I walk out of the elevator, mm -hmm. and I'm like shaking a little bit, like I'm shaking. And so I walk over to the desk and I, okay, we 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 actually 
were able to get it out of the library, it was very difficult. Um, I am not entirely certain. I, th I know things got a little bit out of hand. I didn't mean for, I'm, I'm a much, I promise I'm a much better agent than this, than this. And then I like start patting myself and then like I go down and then I come back up and then I like pull it out and just set it on the desk. And um, I think, I don't, I don't know if we were being chased. I, I know we were being chased when we left, but I don't think anybody fall. I don't, I'm pretty sure no one followed, followed us here. And I am going to buff up my lies with my stunt uh, master of lies to add a plus two. Okay. And I think, yeah, it's an eight total. Uh, eight plus two, or did it already add the plus two? Yeah. It, it so, already added. Yeah. yeah, so eight total. Okay. Um, yeah, like Wellington is extremely taken aback. Wow. I mean, news travels fast. We heard that there was a bit of a ruckus at the auction, uh, but we were not aware that this much had gone wrong. I suppose that's what happens when you send a bunch of newbie agents on a an important mission but I promise we will do better next time I will do better next time I do you have the zoetrope he interrupts you yeah I like I feel feel around that's when I, I feel around and I uh, uh produce it and sit it on the desk okay so he takes out like some special like uh it it looks like they're not really goggles they're it's mm -hmm. more like um, two monocles attached by a thin wire to make like a semblance of glasses, but there's uh, no like arms that hook over the ears. It's just mm -hmm. those. And he holds them up um, while he while he, you put the zoetrope on and uh, he um, kind of runs his finger around the edge and you can see there are a couple of bulges um, in, on the inside. For anyone who doesn't know what a zoetrope is, I'm going to explain. Um, a zoetrope was one of the first um, like moving pictures, so like movie type things. It's basically like a circular item on a little stand that you kind of spin around and it looks like an uh, animation is happening because each little um, almost slide-like picture has a tiny different um, uh, change to it. So it makes it look like it's actually a motion um, animation happening. And this zoetrope with the amber uh, cluster um, is said to um, be able to hypnotize people. Um, so the amber itself is what uh, makes the zoetrope uh, an interest to the ministry. And uh, Wellington Books has just uh, kind of figured out where the amber has been um, seated inside the the zoetrope. There's a two um, like sort of paper pieces and in between is where the amber cluster has been set into the zoetrope. Um, and he is pulling out uh, this piece of amber right now. And I need Dusk to make a deceit roll, please. Okay. Hmm. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, two seconds, sorry. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. um, I can only use a stunt once, right? Um, that stunt you can only use, you can use stunts more than once, but you can only use the same stunt once. Mm -hmm. or, but like okay. you can't use the same stunt consecutively. Um, will, an, will an aspect bolster this at all which aspect are you trying to use? uh i guess sniper liar soldier spy is what it says so okay um 
And so all aspects cause a fate co cost a fate point. Do you have one? Yes, that I don't mind using. Okay. Okay. Um that will give you a plus one to okay. your roll. All right. Okay. Let's uh fingers crossed here. Oh, that's the worst. Okay, three, I guess. Uh, Does it count as under orders? What's that? <laughs> Does this count as under orders? Um, well, yes. Yes, I will give you a plus two for that. Uh, okay. Oh, five total, I guess. It's a four, because plus two plus Well, plus two. the one. Well, oh, plus the one for the aspect and then plus the two for okay yes. yeah so plus Fortis. five um unfortunately of course <laughs> Bo books is uh notice roll which is what he rolls against oh, can, your oh, oh darn no. <laughs> i didn't know it was notice uh, uh, uh. no 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 you roll deceit he rolls right. notice it's okay. an opposed roll and his you. his notice roll was a plus seven mm, of course so he he's like wait a minute this amber isn't real it's not real no this is a was, fake amber was that a will roll it was a no. notice yeah it's a notice okay for on his part Yes, yes, it was a notice on his and uh, okay. deceive on mine. Okay, uh, just checking. Unfortunate. It's it's. I mean, it was the only thing that was in. That was the only thing for me to grab. I, I'm not. I don't know. Um, it's not real. Um, if I may, I did mention once I got to look at it that I wasn't quite certain it matched. The descriptions that I read about, uh, I thought maybe it was just a trick of the light as we were running, but perhaps, perhaps Dr. Um, Dr. Axelrod kept the real one safe elsewhere or decided to keep it for himself. I don't, I don't understand very distressing very distressing indeed and uh books presses a button on the side of his desk um and says well i i'm i will definitely have to alert the uh senior agent um about this uh this new occurrence so there is going to be a senior agent coming up the elevator and you all are here in this room and book says wait right here and we'll sort this out as soon as the senior as the senior agent arrives all right Is the secret agent coming up Pied Piper and uh, like my way or? Are you standing in front of the elevator on the street level? We're on the street level, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, but did you wait in front of the elevator or were you just inside the ministry HQ? I was, I would have waited close just in case something went awry so I could yeah. go my okay. people. I think we would have been by the elevator. Yeah. Okay. Not in like a, we're guarding the elevator way. Yeah. It's more right. Like a, right, just like a, hmm. like okay. we're just agents just chilling. <laughs> right, right. Okay. And doing handstands. <laughs> <laughs> Let's star swipe to you guys then. The, the th uh, it's Pied Piper and uh, Cypher. Phoenix. Or Phoenix. Oh, Phoenix. Yeah, I'm inside the. Okay, Pied Piper and Phoenix down a uh, street side um, where the elevator is and you see three agents um, start walking toward the elevator. One is clearly talking through a communicator um, and you hear Books' name mentioned and uh, a 
fake artifact and they are headed straight toward you. What would you like to do? Phoenix, we either go help them or we get the artifact where it needs to go. Shouldn't we help them escape? Shouldn't we get the artifact where it needs to go? Well, I can give it to you and you can get it. Do we even know where it needs to go? Where does this need to go? Yeah, where does it need to go? (laughs) (laughs) It would just be running. (laughs) (laughs) No, you you were told ahead of time that once you passed off the fake zoetrope to books, um, you would take the real zoetrope to a place called the Balling Elephant Pub to meet with um, codename Rogue. I'm going to interpret that to mean we need to like actually successfully pass it off before we can go to the other place. Let's go help our friends. Or you could have just gone. True. We didn't think of that. <laughs> if you... <laughs> the, the ministry would have been after you if you had not returned there with something. See? <laughs> oh, so did so did we all have to return back to report? I I mean, if you didn't want to burn your identities as, you know, secret agents working within another uh, organization within the ministry, if you'd like to go back to your ministry jobs, let's go help our friends. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to go up to the guards and mm-hmm. uh, I just want to- These like... are these are agents, not guards. Oh, okay, sorry. Mm-hmm. I want to walk up to the agents and like, you know, kind of just with an air of confidence, like, I don't care if you're fucking agents and uh, just kind of, um, I think I just want to try to distract them, like tug on their, tug on their jackets and going, there's there's agents outside in a brawling. They're just bitching at each other and just fighting. I don't know what's going on. And I just want to, and um, I want to use uh, I dare you. Okay. And I want to, <laughs> and that would, I just want to provoke them. Okay. Um, this is going to be, since all they are trying to do is actually get on the elevator, I'm going to call this creating an opportunity for an hour. So you need to, okay. um, you get, you roll your provoke and then you get a plus two to that. Okay. Ooh. Oh. Uh. Oh. So just okay. two? So, um, no, that's, that's actually pretty, pretty good. Um, you get a plus two to that mm-hmm. and you get a plus two because that was Pied Piper's orders to help your friends. So you made a four. The difficulty was exactly four. Ooh. So um, for that last distract- order, Piper. <laughs> I'm good for <laughs> one thing. Friends. <laughs> I have one job. <laughs> <laughs> You've distracted them enough that they have turned away from the elevator, um, but they have not l- actually left the entrance, the, the Ministry HQ hallway. Um, I know how to hit things. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sock them one. Let's, yep. Uh, <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, What'd you say about my mom? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's, are you, are you, you're just like actually using oh. your fists? <laughs> okay. Please do a fight roll. Okay. Uh, have a fist in the face is worth two in the bush when sure. engaging in a brawl or unarmed combat plus two to fight. Oh my God. Okay. My <laughs> character was built for things giving orders and hitting stuff (laughs) (laughs) okay i want to know what the score is that's plus two in addition to that because of the fight okay 
yeah, that's, that's really, wow, you land like such an awesome punch. Like the, the three of them are kind of clustered together and your, your punch like is like domino. It's like you hit the first one and then he like stumbles and falls backward into the second agent who also is caught off guard and stumbles and falls. So now these three agents are on the ground, but you have also, also attacked fellow agents and they're upset. Get out, get out now. You can get out now. It's, it's, <laughs> we're, we're keeping distracted. <laughs> are they actually dressed like Keystone cops though? Cause that would be. <laughs> and no, every, um, all of the agents are kind of dressed sort of um, men in blackish, except for like, Victorian wear so uh, like you know they have like the the cravat and the the shirt and the vest and the outer like jacket the dinner jacket and like all the different it's like 20 different pieces to Victorian dress wear so yes um but they're all pretty much dressed exactly the same okay all right mm. I I I told you, I told you not to take my last banana and I'm just <laughs> keep punching. <laughs> Get out if you want. <laughs> the, um, the lunches were labeled in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> so only Phoenix took explosive, right? Uh, no, me. Cypher. Cypher. Cypher also took, yeah. So Cypher, I just kind of like make eye contact with you and like, please know what I'm talking about. Everyone heard Pied Piper say, get out of there. And so um, I-, I would like is I would like to see if I can roll uh, where everyone knows your name. When you okay. and your allies are surrounded by enemies and need a quick way out. Mm hmm. Roll to have contact, uh, roll plus two to contacts to have them assist you as long as you are in a familiar place. Okay, this is absolutely a familiar place. Okay, is um, there anybody else in here, or is there like a door to other archivists? Or, uh, this is like a large room that is like what you like a warehouse sort of, it's just like a large open space. Um, books is desk, it's there. And then everything else is just like shelves and um, different drawers and, and things that are have archives in them. Like there's tags, there's like okay. a little. So like, there could conceivably be other archivists and junior archivists and stuff down here browsing? Sure. Okay. There could be. Then I'm um, going to roll that. <laughs> Dust, can I have you make a uh, notice roll also? Absolutely. And I also want to talk with um what's his face and just kinda while um while while um Cypher's doing what she's doing, uh, notice notice. I rolled right? a two and then plus two from um, so so what did you roll? Because that's you you, you oh, have to ha, roll. okay, okay, ha, I missed that. Okay, contacts and then plus two and plus four. Two from the skill and mm -hmm. two from. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, so oh, a. Oh, God, no. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Wait, how did you get a minus? So, so it's, it's a one. She, you have. Um, I have a you one. got all, all of your four die dice rolled uh negative yeah <laughs> so um it's actually a zero because you get up a, a plus two um for following pied piper yeah i got plus two for directive. following those and then plus two from uh my skill or mm -hmm. my stunt okay. so where, where is books around and then your contacts is plus one right yes Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five. That's actually a positive two. Uh, a positive one, sorry, a positive yeah. one. Uh, you have four, four 
minus four plus five. So that's plus one. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Ooh. yeah, out out of uh one of the um one of these uh aisles, uh a junior archivist uh wanders out um and uh says oh good the zoetrope is here and starts talking to books and books is distracted now okay. because he's speaking to that person um and dusk that is a fantastic notice role um dusk you are actually a junior archivist are you not i think you are Someone mm -hmm. is. i'm a junior I'm archivist in. Wait, who's who? Okay, um, I'm in administration. In, uh, the junior archivist. Um, you're in the room, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, oh, and I am. Uh, can you make a notice roll? Actually, sorry. Who? Uh, Me? Cipher. Yes, Me? Cipher. Okay. Cipher. Uh. Let's see. Notice is not great. Fingers crossed. Okay. Ha. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So with uh, Dusk's notice roll, which was really great, um, and with your uh, distraction and your notice roll, uh, Cypher, you, um, Cypher, you've been down here in the archives. You actually work under um, Wellington Books. And you have seen him go to the far side of the room before, um, on the opposite side of where the elevator is. And he has kind of disappeared in the stacks. And when you have gone back there, you have not seen him. Uh, with your notice roll dusk, you know that there is like a draft that comes from back there. There's a secret tunnel to the outside behind there that you can utilize while books is now distracted by the, um, the other archivist that is talking to him. Follow me, be super <laughs> casual. <laughs> and then I like, just like stand up, look around and then just like start to disappear behind some of the cases. I follow. Same. Okay. <laughs> so you follow out the tunnel and you find yourself outside on the, uh, the opposite uh, side of the, um, ministry hq from the front door like you're on you're on the the back side of of the hq hey are y'all out are you all let's out let's go back to pied piper <laughs> and phoenix <laughs> the two of you are in the, the 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 large hallway the front you know entrance of um ministry hq Pied Piper, you've just, you know, knocked down three fellow agents. Uh, Phoenix, you are doing something, uh, distract, uh, causing a distraction or whatnot. Um, but Dusk has just notified you that they've gotten out. So, <laughs> Phoenix, you're you muted. Sorry. I look at Piper and uh, and I just go, it sounds like they got out, got out okay. Should we just go run <laughs> yeah let's go okay. yeah <laughs> leave people's talk? lunches alone <laughs> <laughs> okay um i need both of you to make a sport roll to dodge around these agents that you have started a, a unwarranted fight with and <laughs> other people that are in the big hallway now that have <laughs> drawn the attention of. I'm a grizzled veteran with a spurt of zero. Uh, 
Piper with me. <laughs> they were not joking about their bones aching. <laughs> Phoenix, you did an excellent job dodging. Um, Piper going away. Not so great. <laughs> not so great at all. Um, Phoenix, to help out Piper, please do a physique roll. Damn it, boss. <laughs> <laughs> I am the Keystone Cop, okay? I am the Keystone <laughs> Cop. Okay, and you get you get a plus two with that also. So um yeah, so you manage to uh hook your arm um under uh as I it uh, away. <laughs> Piper's, yeah, under Piper's arm and, and lift Piper to their feet and you um you do take off out the front door of uh Ministry HQ. Pied Piper, you are gonna take one uh damage to your uh physique for that uh bumbling, stumbling uh fall <laughs> that you took while trying to escape. <laughs> I just fell so to hard your, on my back. to your uh, physical stress. Sorry, I got like a bruise on my tailbone, and it's really <laughs> <Yeah>. bad. Let's <laughs> bar. But it says that when engaging in unarmed combat, you may either ignore the first plus one stress you receive from a fight or other not relevant things. Hey, there you go. All right, it's my tailbone's okay. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we have. Um, Three agents on the the back side of the um, of Ministry HQ. I, I would assume you you're rounding the corner to meet your uh, two compatriots near the front. Meet at the place okay. where we're supposed to take the thing. Okay. Um, so the final beautiful, wonderful map street map under handouts uh this is your this is how you have to um escape so to speak to the bawling elephant pub which is at uh first in wentworth ministry hq is at fifth and haversham can we take a and look? it's basically a grid you just have to uh make it there but for each block you have to do some sort of role so if you are just you know running pell-mell down the street that could attract attention if you're going to try to be a little more discreet um then i would need you to make a stealth role to and and tell me which direction you want to go because you can go any way you want to, to get to the walling elephant. Okay, so, um, I mean, Phoenix has the real one. Yep. So, mm -hmm. but I don't want to be a distraction. Mm -hmm. No, that doesn't suit me at all. Are we just like meeting up again or how are we doing like this? Like a cab or a, a carriage or something? I don't know what you uh, No. There's no car carriages. What's on the street? It is. This is a London. It is a walking town. Oh. <laughs> Lies. Hmm. Fine. Um. So we could zigzag. <laughs> Let's go we, through a building. Sure. Um. We could. I mean, we came out on the back of the ministry so mm -hmm. well, i mean i'm saying what what say you which means Are that we... you would you would be one block further this is off the map but you would be right on, uh seventh street seventh okay and makes Haversham. sense makes sense um what do you what say you boss are we meeting up or are y'all just are you all just booking it or we're gonna try to get the drop on him meet us there 
Okay. Okay, well. Cyber, Ruby, uh, dust us. Let's, let's go. <laughs> I'm going to okay. uh, use stealth and try to uh, stick to the shadows and take a slightly longer, I guess, more roundabout way. Okay. So um, I would say that, um, so if you're on, uh, you're on 7th Street, okay, mm -hmm. back of the ministry, 7th and Haversham. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to avoid um, the ministry completely, you would walk down 7th toward Wentworth. Okay, yeah. And then up Wentworth toward the bawling elephant. We could go even longer than that, though, and go all the way down to Oliver and go. You mean I have to walk? <laughs> well, it's either that to get caught. So it's in London. So go down seventh, go up Oliver, and then go down <sighs> first to the bawling elephant. Fine. Okay. So, um, it would be nice. I, I promise. <laughs> I need. <sighs> I need those of you that are doing this circuitous route um, and sticking to the shadows to make uh, two stealth rolls just to get to Oliver, uh, seventh and Oliver. This one. Nice. Dusk is sneaky. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Dusk is very sneaky. Dusk is just gone. Yeah. It's so yeah. nice. So nice out. I don't know. Yeah, you Dusk guys are. Now, right, right. <laughs> you Listen. are um, at uh, 7th and Oliver right now. So there's um, three blocks up. One, one, two, three blocks up Oliver to get to First Street, and then one block over to get to um, the bong. Uh, first in Wentworth, where the thing where it is. Uh, let's check in before you finish your route. Let's check in. Um, what's Piper doing? I'm looking for a place to like, like slip. Like I'm gonna hide under a pile of rags, as like in a building. I don't know. Like <laughs> And see if I can find a place where Phoenix and I can both like hide and let them run past and then do the like sneak out like you do in movies. Okay, okay. That's my best uh, idea. Phoenix, <laughs> you have a better idea. Uh, okay. Oh. Uh, let me see. Yeah, just hide in an alleyway between like Haversham and Third and like kind of just. And I'd like to like kind of check around and see our surroundings and see if, if they've where they're at okay um so i need you both to make stealth rolls also is there any like abandoned areas here like i mean there's there's buildings um oh. they're not like super close to each other a lot of the they're like estates really um so most of them have but it's populated. Uh, it's, yeah, it's somewhat like it's, it's, you know, this is a Victorian era of London. So there's people around, but it is not quite the same as you may expect from, uh, you know, contemporary urban area. Because mm. I wanted to throw this grenade. <laughs> I don't think uh, this may be a little too populated for that. So, sure. <laughs> well, um, two. There's uh, several guards come running out the front um, door of the ministry, um, but they got a negative three on their notice rolls and 
both of you have positive stealth rolls. So you manage to tuck yourself in a little like alcove that is there and the guards run out and, and run past you. Um, they run toward uh, Wentworth Avenue. The guards, like uh, several of them run toward Wentworth Avenue and several of them run on Fifth Street off, off the map in the opposite direction. Um, Boss, yes. I think they're gone. So you've tucked yourself into a little alcove that is on uh, Haversham Place between Fifth and Third. All right, let's check in with the others who are now at um, 7th and um, Oliver Circle. I need you to, um, several guards have, have run out of Ministry HQ and run in your direction now. So I need you to make uh, stealth rolls if you want to try to avoid them, or if you want to maybe confront them, you could also do that too. I'm going to stealth. How many rolls? Uh, just one to avoid the guards. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you all beat these guards really have bad notice for <laughs> some reason. That's um, like all they're supposed to do is notice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, oh, the, <laughs> <laughs> but um, when all of you are getting a plus two from your leader, you're all beating these notice rolls because they only had a plus three. So um, you, you managed to dodge around and now you are at third and Oliver circle and your compatriots are right near third on Haversham Place. So uh, I need everybody to make a stealth roll in order to get the rest of the way to the bawling elephant and avoid guards. Um, there's now also whistles going, which means that the, the police have been alerted and there will be uh, patrol, police patrols. So everybody, please make a stealth roll. This is going to be a really hard roll. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody or just three? Okay, so um, I'm going to throw this statue. Someone better catch it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so to uh, Piper and to uh, Cypher and Phoenix, all of you here wherever you are you hear stop stop um please behind each one of you phoenix run and i'm gonna back up and start shooting my cane rifle in the air and try to run <laughs> okay. past the police <laughs> leading them as if i were a pied piper <laughs> 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 so Piper, please um make, let's see, what do I want you to make for this? No, normally I would say firearms, but you're not necessarily like targeting a person, a particular person to utilizing shoot. firearms to target psychologically. <laughs> um <laughs> That like psychological targeting is actually empathy, but oh, I don't think oh, that don't fits that. now either. <laughs> no. Um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say just fight, just do a fight role. Okay, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> 
yes, they follow you. And now, now the way is clear. Um, just for style points, I'm going to like whistle like a jaunty tune. Oh, of course. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh phoenix where were you you were with piper right right okay um and you're the one who has the the uh genuine zoetrope right mm -hmm. okay all right so you all arrive in front of the bawling elephant minus your leader who has um led off the police and the guards who were possibly chasing after you um, and uh, enter inside. Um, and you go up to the counter and you ask for a uh, yeah. rogue um, beer, which is your code for meeting uh, the person and the bartender says have a seat over and he points to a um, a booth you can see like the booth opens away from you and you can see like uh, the head of someone sticking up over the top of the booth uh, mm, no really can I get a real beer though please <laughs> <laughs> the bartender like looks at you and then he um pours you the cheapest draft available thanks and and bangs the glass on the table i like scoop it up in my arm and then just like walk <laughs> over <laughs> very good <weird. laughs> so at the booth, when you arrive at the booth, there's a, a petite woman sitting there at the booth. She has red, bright red hair um, and um, a white streak in her hair. No, sorry, that's the wrong rogue. Um, she... <laughs> I follow. <laughs> I got you there. I get it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Sorry, it's, 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 it is after midnight. I'm a little bit uh, giddy at this <laughs> point. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you meet her and she's like, well, um, agents, I hear you've uh, caused some uproar uh, tonight but well done for acquiring the item that we wanted. Uh, rest assured, it will be handed off to the proper authorities that will help repatriate it to its uh, country of origin. Thank you, agents. Um, I hope all of you haven't burned your identities with the ministry oh, because it would be helpful to have some agents on the inside. However, don't worry about that for now. Go home, rest, and uh, be assured that whether you keep your jobs at the ministry or not, we will have our eyes on you. Before that, do you think you could help our boss out? They're kind of... Yeah. Oh, yes. We, yeah. we have uh, people on the streets who will be sure that your okay. boss is safe. Yay. <laughs> I thought I was making a noble sacrifice. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You don't understand. Ruby, it again, Piper. Ruby, Ruby has been now formulating a plan. She, uh, first off, I am in administration. My connections are uh, highly valued. I am going to be using any sort of combination of arrogance is my middle name. I personally know your boss combined with made person. I will spend fake points. And if I have to use my gadget, <laughs> this sort of <laughs> whatever it was, a training, a, a, a this or whatever to where 
maybe somebody has to take administrative leave for a couple of days or something. Maybe it was like a flu or something, whatever. I, I'm going to cash all of that in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Congratulations. <laughs> And that has been the ministry initiative. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Oh we would all, we would all. <laughs> uh, we have a, a few minutes left before our end time. So let's just go uh, back around and have everyone introduce themselves and uh, mention any social media that you would like to mention where you can be found and any other um projects or anything that you're taking part in right now. Uh, we'll start with the illustrious but uh, missing leader, Pride Piper. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Only time in my life I get to be illustrious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jen. Um, I'm on Twitter at Quixote Jen, Q-U-I-X-O-T-E Jen. Um, we, I like to go there and talk about DMing and homebrewing. And I also stream on Featherfall Tabletop on Tuesday nights um as like the sweetest dimmest literal airhead that you've ever met um so that's featherfall tt on twitter and i i don't i don't know twitch addresses so find us on twitter okay uh dusk oh that's me hi i'm ray um you can find me on twitter at ray transitional um i talk nonsense mostly so <laughs> follow at your own risk um you can find me mostly here on welcome to the party's twitch channel um you can find me here friday evenings at 1 p.m easter time at uh i am in the game um let sleeping angels lie dm by the underscore lady underscore ori um i play in smr blood hunter blood hunter um you can find me there and then occasionally whenever it starts back up you will find me on uh vibrant visible victorious which runs on which will run on saturdays usually um when that whenever that starts back up um and you'll of course see me around the discord sometimes okay cypher hi i'm lauren i played cypher tonight you can find me on twitter at sith which where uh currently i am in a star wars explosion that's gonna last a bit uh i you can also find a, a full list of pretty much everything I've done lately, audiobooks, podcasts, audio dramas, writing at my website, lwsalinas.com. And uh, I pop in and out of games, usually one shots on here and uh, elsewhere. So, yay. Uh, Phoenix. Hello, uh, my... Uh, my name is Gemma. I play Phoenix on this very cool game. And uh, congratulations to the GM Lily. Wasn't this your first? Uh, it first was. Game? <laughs> no, my, my first no, on stream GM. Friend. Awesome. <laughs> Kudos to you. Um, you can find me on the Welcome to the Party Discord and the Twitterverse at Kupo Knight. Uh, on Twitter, Kupo is with a zero. Um, and well in welcome to the party i'm usually streaming games on the weekends saturday i'm in two campaigns 7 p.m eastern time i am on stars asunder where i play a goth mechanic um gm'd by the well the producer fox barrett of side quests <laughs> i see you i see you you don't see her but we see her invisible but very necessary <laughs> Uh, and then right after that, uh, Adventures in Agnia, D and D, Five E, uh, homebrew setting uh, world, and uh, I play a Furbolg monk. And then uh, Sunday mornings at nine a.m. Eastern, I am on the Nerds with Dice uh, channel, uh, where I'm doing an eight episode miniseries, uh, Fifteen Days in Pasadena, and that is using uh, Capers Noir. Um, and when I'm not doing all that stuff. I am the host of a podcast called Diverse Geeks in Focus, and we focus on marginalized voices in geek culture. Uh, that comes out every other Wednesdays, uh, so check it wherever you uh, catch your pods. Okay, and Ruby. Hi, I'm Michelle Ely. I am on Twitter at Michelle Ely. I played Ruby, the character who proved that in the end, money solves everything. <laughs> um, uh, you can find me here on Saturdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, also in Stars Asunder. 
who I where I play Thorn, who's like innocent and has no idea about anything. Uh, but then on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern, you can find me on the crazy game called Rifts. It's sci fi, it's steampunk, it's vampire hunting, it's a dating sim, it's all that. Um, so you can find find me there and, and also on our Discord. Okay, and I was Lily, the GM. I'm at Elise on Life on Twitter, and I am Lascribe on Twitch and Discord. Uh, this was my first time GMing on a welcome party stream, but thank you. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> I, I have been on the player side for um, other side quests and I will be in the future. I am also part of the welcome, uh, the adventures in Agni uh, campaign that happens on uh, Saturdays late night. And I do also sometimes show up on 3V, which is visible, vibrant, victorious. Uh, it's on hiatus right now, but it's an all POC uh, one shot um, that happens on Sundays. So check that out once it comes back. I am also part of an all femme um, Star Wars actual play podcast called Misfits of Space. So that is me, and this was my Fate uh, RPG that was a sort of steampunkish, sort of Victorian, sort of Warehouse 13 one-shot. Thank you to all the players, and thank you to everyone who came to watch. Uh, we're going to be rating Soul Bear RPG, so stick around and say hi in chat once we get there. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.